Hello all, this is Russ. I um, wanted to post a video here to give a basic introduction for people who have done Java before about the quirks of C. Uh, obviously, if we want to talk about the whole C language, that's a uh, quite significant uh, topic. That would be 352. Um, but what I'm going to show you here is just the basics of C that you need in order to do the sort of projects we're going to do in this class. And for that, we don't have to go very far. All right, so the first thing to know about C is that it's not object-oriented. And that means we don't have classes. So let me show you sim1.c. This is the, uh, the file that I provide as part of uh, the Sim1 project. And what you'll notice, of course, is uh, something that looks pretty similar uh, to a Java function. In fact, it is very, very similar. Um, but it's not wrapped inside a class. So you're not going to see public class, anything like that. In fact, you're not going to see public and private at all, because C is an older language that doesn't have that concept. Uh, what we do have, uh, as you notice, is a function called execute add returns void. It takes a parameter. Now the, now the name of that parameter is obj. Now you can change that, of course, if you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but what you'll notice here is this star that's not part of Java. That star simply means pointer. This is the exact same thing as a Java reference. So in Java, you might create a class called sim1data. And you would say, hey, I want to pass sim1data as a parameter to an object or a parameter to a function. Um, you would just say sim1data space obj. But since this is C, um, they always have a star that just says uh, to decorate the fact that it's a pointer. Uh, now, um, we'll talk about how to use that in just a second. Now, what C does, instead of imports, is it has includes. And you'll notice here that we already have all the includes that you're going to need. Um, when you're actually printing things out, you would include some standard libraries. But in these projects, basically, you're just going to be implementing the guts, uh, very, very basic hardware. So all of the printing is going to happen in the test case. And you're not going to have to handle that. So let's take a look at the case um, that we've got for... Now, I'm going to have a number of test cases, but I provided one for you as an example. And what we have here is there's a... This is what's called a forward declaration. It just means that later on in the file, we're going to have a function called printf binary. So this is something that looks kind of familiar. This is a pointer to characters, which, mean, which means a string. It does things like printf, which is very much like system.out.printf. I'm not expecting you to, to dig into this, um, this test case. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups here. I'll try not to let it interrupt me too much. But what you do see is that the main file, or the main function is provided by the test case. So when we run, what we're going to do is we're going to compile both your code and the test case. We're going to link them together. And then when we run, it's actually going to run this main function. It's going to do a little bit of initialization. And then it's going to call execute add, which is the function that you have provided over here. And what it does is it passes a pointer, the little ampersand means get a pointer, uh, a pointer to a sim1 data structure. And that, so you see here, that you get a pointer to a sim1 data as your parameter. You're going to fill in all the output values, and then the test case here will go through and print everything out. And that's actually the end of the test case immediately. We just call your code, print out the result. Now, where is sim1 data defined? So that's where the header file comes in. You will not need to modify this header file. I'm showing you just a little bit so you can understand conceptually what it is. Here is sim1.h. Um, you can ignore, this is called the guards. When you take 352, they'll explain that. The key here is that here is the declaration of a sim1 data structure. So a struct is 
almost exactly like a Java class. Um, the key differences here are that it cannot have any member functions. And so what we have in sim data is that every sim1 data has two integers called a and b, has an integer called sum, um, and it has three integers carry out, or two integers carry out an overflow. Now what you'll notice here is that carry out and overflow are both individual bits. They're ones or zeros. But C does not have a built-in Boolean type, and so the convention in C is that we simply use integers as Booleans, and you'll set it to a 1 to mean true, a 0 means false. And so we could go in here into our C file, and we could edit it. Now to access the fields of a struct, when you have a pointer, uh, in Java you were familiar for java object dot field. And that actually works in C if it's not a pointer. Uh, you can actually go look at the test case and see how it prints things out. It uses dot for not pointer. But in the case of a pointer, you're going to need to use this arrow syntax. And the arrow simply means follow the pointer and then go access that particular field inside of it. So we could do like obj sum equals one, two, three, four. This will set the sum field inside the object to one, two, three, four. Of course, we can read values as well. We can say int x equals object a and so on. Um, so these, uh, other than the arrow, this works exactly like Java objects. It's not particularly remarkable. You know, we might, uh, we could say obj overflow equals zero. You could say obj uh, carry out. All right, so capital O equals one. Be careful in your code to make sure that you always set all of the output fields because in C we don't default things to zero. So if you want it to be zero, set it to zero. If you want it to be one, set it to one and so on. Um, and so this execute add is going to work pretty much like the execute function inside sim1 add. Uh, now, some other things that you might need to know. Um, inside a function, the syntax of C and the syntax of Java are pretty much identical. Because, of course, Java was built to look like C. It was a, it came around around 20 years later. So you can do things like you can have an if statement. If the object A is equal to 1 or 100 because it's a 32-bit value. You know, maybe it's something interesting. Um, you can use the slash slash comments. You can use star slash. Technically, the slash slash comments are part of plus, but most C compilers support it. Um, you can declare variables. Um, some C compilers, I don't believe that this will be an issue in the grading script, but some C compilers are a little picky and want you to put it, all your variables at the top of the variable. I don't think that'll be a problem. Um, you can do for loops in, um, in C. Now, again, I don't recall what version of the compiler we're running, but it's a good habit in C to declare your variables before the for loop because the original C spec actually didn't support it. So you can do something like this. You can iterate from 1 to 32 and do something with well, um, variables. Uh, another thing that you will see, um, you're using the various logical operators for the first time. One of the things you should notice is if you have variable bar set a bit, okay? This is an operator that you should view just like the plus operator. This does not modify the variable. All it does is it calculates a variable or calculates a new value. And so this expression doesn't actually change anything anywhere. It simply says, hey, what is the new value, and then throws it away. And so you will need to assign it.
it's not actually a property of C. That's a, well, I should say it's not specific to C. The exact same thing is true in Java. If you try to use the logical or the logical and operators, any of those, you have to assign them back. All right. Um, looking through my notes here. I think that's pretty much what you're going to need to know. Um, uh, since you already know C, there's not much you need to learn about, or since you already know Java, there's not much you need to learn about C. Uh, I will be posting a video of Java for C programmers for the very small number of you who might be impacted by that, uh, but I'll be doing that a little bit later. I hope this was useful, and I will see you in class. Bye-bye.